Oh, uh, uh, it's the video. Who gives a shit? We got Anthony DeRoche from Boston Sports Center now and like Quagga Blues. We got Josh, Mr. UFC, son. We're going to have a panel uh, come May on UFC. He might do a little moonlighting for us, a little writing for us. All right, I got your video. All right, awesome. We got the Pages panel going right now. We got Fitzy from Townie News. Killing it. We got everybody going on here. We got Steiner Sports. So they want to, they hate me. They hate me. In a good way. I love you. We got John A. Selene. I, I got another 15. All right, that works. Anything works. All right. We got Fitzy up here. We're going to work our way. It's Jessica and DA. What's up, guys? Popularity in this country. We got Rich and Christine. What's up? To a more aggressive style of sports. Boxing has fallen past the wayside now. Mark Marino, what's up? Ryan, what's going on? Things are getting more aggressive. Those are obviously popular because we're living in a day and age where football is not only the most popular sport, it's the most popular form of entertainment in this country. More people watch the Super Bowl than the Grammys, the Oscars, and any other telecast of things that people would, they would not be invited to blog or blues that combined would watch. If the NFL goes on strike next year, if they have a lockout, if they miss one year, the NFL would lose. Get ready for this. I know this guy makes it because he makes a lot of money. The NFL last year cleared over $6 billion in profit. Put your little finger at the corner of your mouth and say it Dr. Evil style, over six billion dollars in profit. If they were to lock out for just one year and not figure out if they want to play 18 games, have helmet to helmet collisions, I hope James Harrison retires, I hate that guy. <laughs> Don't ever trust anyone with a pencil thin mustache, by the way. Never trust anyone with a pencil thin mustache. Just a rule of thumb in my life and hers too. Jimmy Buffett. All right. The NFL has got to figure out which way they want to go. Are we going necessarily the way of the running man? I'm not sure. Are we going necessarily back towards soccer, which they call a beautiful game, which it's not, because it's boring. We want to figure it out. We want to play both ways. That's fine. It's going to take minds and money like Robert Kraft has and a lot of other people. Just please don't take away our football. It's what we have. It's what we enjoy. It's what this guy needs. I think they're going to figure it out. I think they should play a 17-game season. Yeah. I think they should split the difference. We could probably lose one. That's a fantastic idea. One new, what do you guys think? One neutral site game per season, pump it up to a 17 game season? I think that would work out very well. Nashua, New Hampshire. It's going to be interesting. Just please don't take away my football. Yeah, amen! Yeah, I'm going to check Amen! Up God bless! Um, the, obviously, the owners don't want the lockout or strike to happen because they get an $80 million check before every season starts from uh, Fox, NBC, CBS, ESPN for the contractual rights. Uh, as far as the players, obviously the condition that they want is higher pay if there are more games. Um, and that's where the owners and the players really have to figure it out. Um, I can't really say much more on it, but the players and the owners have to figure out how they get more compensation if there's more games. I mean, obviously for, for us as writers, we want there to be games to write about. I feel like if there wasn't any sort of football season, I would have nothing to complain about on my blog. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people would be missing out on a job. And that means that we'd have to start planning stuff for Sundays and Mondays, which means, you know, yeah, we'd have to go to church. Boo! <laughs> um, Boo! Right? Yard sales! <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think, you know, for the benefit of everybody, and I think for the benefit of a lot of Boston fans, and just sports fans in general, it's like you hope that they figure something out, but the idea of, of football season not happening next year is a little frightening. What? Agreed. All right, thank you very much for our Patriots panel. Before I let you go, yeah. uh, GFY. GFY. just real quick, I just want to uh, let everybody tell where they can be read and uh, seen and heard. And... Uh, all right, um, I... Write for Patriots Insider for Scout.com. Yeah. So you can go to endofwomen.scout.com. Yeah. And I also do my own personal blog, which is NR with Keisha, K I S H A, dot com. And you can find me on Twitter at Keisha T. I'm Carl Desberg. I write for Boston Sports, then and now. That's right! That's Joe Gill, the official sponsor's site. And I can Woo. be followed at In Boston Sports. Uh, my name is Mike Tussaud, I write patspropaganda.com, Pat's Propaganda on Twitter, and if you come find me, I'll give you an art crafts project that I made of cool Patriot cutouts at my contact info. Very nice. We know this guy. Uh, my name is Ryan Seacrest. You can listen to me every morning from 6 to 10 on Seacrest Live in Los Angeles. I host a small boutique program called American Idol, and I produce Kissing with the Kardashians, so uh, deal with that, everybody. Uh,
My name is Nick Stevens. I play that New England sports nitwit known as Fitzy. You can see me every Friday at 5 in the p.m. on Nesson, hosting Pocket Money. Sometimes enjoyed, often derided. Deal with it. I have a show you don't, so that's that. And <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at, at FitzyGFY. Uh, my website is townynews.com. And I just want to give a round of applause for these Patriots yeah! people out here. This lovely lady. Let's give it up for Joe Gill. Let's give it up for Boston Sports Blog of Palooza Electric Bogaloo. This has been a good time. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Thank you very much. Amen.